Welcome everybody here to our next uh, webinar at uh, JFD Bank. My name is Stefan Friedrichowski and a warm welcome uh, yeah, from my end and in the name of JFD Bank as well. It's a pleasure for me to have you all here for today's webinar about DAX seasonal trading strategy. Sounds interesting. Let's see. Uh, today we have the 20 8th of November uh, 2019, 7 o'clock p.m. at least uh, Central Europe time, uh, wherever you are, you might have a different time zone. At least from the names, it looks that we are quite international um, once again here today. So we talk about DAX seasonal trading strategy. You might have heard about seasonal trading strategies, but this time it will be a little bit different. Normally, um, people think about seasonals, for example, in, in months or in quarters of the year, uh, something like uh, sell in May and go away, um, which is a common sentence about um, DAX or other indices trading, or there might be a year-end rally, something like that. That is seasonal as well, but um, what I will do here today is quite different because we will look for a daily, daily seasonal trading strategy. And um, you later will see um, an Excel sheet, how to develop that. And uh, if you have interest in that, no problem, um, then please just drop me a line here at my email address uh, s.friedrichowski at jfdbank.com. I know my last name is really complicated, so just uh, name me Stefan, uh, that's fair enough. Um, and if you have interest in the slides as well, just um, send me an email. And the other highlight today will be that finally, when we have that kind of strategy, uh, that there's a guy around, um, his name is Peter Mulmer, and he has coded an expert advisor for that kind of strategy. I will show his email address um, later in the webinar. And if you have interest in that um, uh, expert advisor as well, drop a line to Peter, so you will see. Um, but I have to say, uh, that is a commercial issue, so um, there is a price tag uh, um, to that expert advisor. So just uh, get in touch with uh, Peter for that. Okay, let's really start and jump into Ducks Daily Seasonals. But you know, before I really start, um, it's always the same kind of procedure. I have first to show up the risk disclaimer um, because we talk about trading, we talk about trading strategies, and yeah, finally you might do things. But of course, whatever you do, you do it always on your own responsibility. I think that's quite self-explaining. But anyhow, it has to be mentioned at least uh, during once during any webinar. So. That's done. So let's look for the agenda for today. So since I got a couple of questions from time to time about um, differences uh, about trading the ducks uh, compared to uh, trading, um, for example, other indices like S&P 500, and most of the people realize that DAX trading is a little bit more tricky than uh, maybe other indices. And I will give you an answer for that. And still we introduce later a duck seasonal trading strategy because there's a good thing about the ducks as well. But let's, um, let's see what are the differences when it comes to DAX trading, for example, instead of S&P 500. So let's let's keep that as an introduction general to trading indices. Um, Although later our strategy will be a purely intraday strategy. It will be a strategy opening a trade at eight o'clock in the morning, at least um, Central Eastern, uh, Central Europe. Is it Central Eastern or Central Europe time? Anyhow, you know what I mean. Uh, so let's call it my time. Um, so this is the time I have here on my, my uh, clock. Anyhow, so opening a trade just in the morning, closing the trade in the evening at 10 p.m. And that's all. 
but the direction of that trade and the stop loss of that trade that should be um, derived during the webinar. But that means we have to talk about seasonals in general because I want to give you a little bit bigger picture about that. And then we do that day of the week analysis because it will have to do with the days of the week. So there's a difference between a Monday and a, to a Tuesday. You might have heard about um, Reversal Tuesday, something like that, um, on other web pages, or you, you might have the same feeling from your trading experience. Yeah, there's something like that. But the good thing, as you always know, um, I'm always looking more from a statistical point of view. So I just, I never would go for something I just have heard. Um, I need a proof, at least a statistical edge for that kind of idea. And only if I have that and still seeing that's profitable when it um, comes to costs of trading as well, then it's a strategy for my. So therefore, we do that kind of analysis, definitely. And that means finally, we have a complete trading strategy with simple rules. And um, those rules are just based on the day of the week combined with, with an EMA. It's really easy, but that's already a complete strategy. Um, by the way, many thanks for the greetings here in the chat. Um, Thank you for that. And if you have from later any question, just drop a line um, in the control panel of the uh, go to webinar uh, control panel. Yeah. So I know that when people look for a, a long term chart of the ducks like, like this one here, um, you may think, wow, trading should be extremely simple. You look for the chart here. Okay, the chart starts at 2000 and already ends around 2016. Uh, later, we will go um, further the timeline until yesterday. Um, but anyhow, so we see the DAX chart. And if I would plot the S&P 500, it would look quite similar. Um, but um, as a German, I have to admit that the overall performance of the S&P 500 is really better than the DAX. And even the DAX is a so-called um, performance index, not a price index. But anyhow, that's not the topic of today. Um, you see the chart and you think, hey, okay, going long here, 2003, waiting until the financial crisis. Um, well, it's about already... Uh, 5,000 points going out in the financial crisis, jumping in later uh, when everything was over. Okay, that gives you another 2,000 points. Um, whatever has been here, I can't remember, 2011. Um, and then going long once again. And um, as we speak, we would be once again long. So five, maybe five trades here on a long term chart. And um, we, I think we would have made more than 10,000 points in total. Wow. Yeah, I know. Uh, that's the one end. Um, and still we are thinking about CFD trading. So that would mean, okay, we have financing costs. We have to look for that as well, at least because we, in this case, we would have trades long lasting for five years sometimes. But okay, then you might think even the small changes we might trade for a couple of days. Yeah. But now we have always to think about trading means we need a stop loss. No trade without a stop loss, at least in general. There are exceptions from time to time. You might do it. For example, when we talk about um, stock trading, real stock trading strategies, um, then we can, in most cases, live without stop loss, um, at least when we go long uh, in real stocks, which definitely is always the case in real stocks. But so we need stop losses. And even if you think on smaller time frames, it might get much more tricky than the graph seems to illustrate. And 
in order to compare that from a more mathematical point of view, I want to do a comparison of DAX with S&P 500. And I will look for two, um, let's call it parameters or indicators or numbers. And I want to compare the ATR, which is the average true range, which means that is a measure of volatility, so to say. So if the ATR is high, it means we have huge candles. Not just, we don't uh, say anything about the sign, whether it's a long or short candle, but at least if the ATR is high, it means we have long candles in whatever direction. So ATR is interesting to know. And even the other thing we might have a look is the absolute change from one day to the other in terms of close to close. So from one close to the close of the next day. But let's look for that first thing without a sign. Still, we, um, the question is, why is it more tricky to trade the DAX than other indices? And what I've done here is a chart, which uh, normally I call so uh, pseudo histograms. Um, so let me tell you what that is. So I have investigated uh, 4,000 dates. So I have for any day between 2000 and 2016, I know the ATR. And now I ordered those numbers by um, by size, so in, in, by, by increasing numbers. And that's exactly the plot here. So the lowest ATR ever for the S&P 500 is this red number here. And I calculated the ATR uh, in percent um, because yeah, normally in a chart, um, charting software, the ATR is plotted uh, as an absolute number, um, but that's not good because we have always to compare the ATR to the price itself. So therefore I plot the ATR um, in percent of the price. So we start here with something like 0.6% and go up until here. And the same is done for the DAX. And now you can think immediately, hey, that's interesting. So overall, the volatility, the ATR in percent, and percent is always what really counts. Uh, think about um, any move. We have, if we compare DAX and S&P 500, we have to think about uh, percentage moves. Um, the overall volatility of the DAX is much higher, almost a factor of two in for, for, for most numbers here, hey, that's interesting. So that's that's the first, um, let's call it observation. And the same, not that obvious, is if I compare, if I do the same kind of plot as a close to close pseudo histogram. So it means now, um, once again, for the last uh, uh, 4,000 days, I calculated always the absolute close to close in percent, and then order those numbers um, by size, and then plot them. Okay, the difference is not that huge here, but still remarkable. So what does it mean? Let me put the two things in one table. So we have the average true range and uh, what I did by the way was um, for 120 days. So on average for DAX it's close to 2% and uh, the absolute change um, is 1%. S&P 500 average true range uh, 1.4 and close to close in average over the complete history here is 0.8. So that means the S&P 500, I would say, works cleaner compared to the DAX. It's not that wiggling around. That you can see um, because of the smaller average ATR. So the DAX has a tendency of yeah, moving, but during that move, it's always going a little bit more north, a little bit more south, and that is is 
one reason that tax trading is tricky because think about you you do any trend following uh, trading strategy you need a stop loss and within the DAX or if it comes to DAX trading then it's you you, you would need um, much bigger stop losses because some noise in the data and you are kicked out of the trade so that's a clear observation because we have a difference in the ATR uh, comparing DAX and S&P 500. So the variations for the DAX are even bigger as well from close to close. So there's the overall noise is simply higher. Now let me rephrase here everything in a really simple words and I uh, don't understand me wrong, but um, you know that I'm not native English. So DAX is, uh, let's say, more bitchy. Um, yeah, uh, so I hope you understand what I mean here, and I hope I can even say it that way. Um, but that's the reason. The reason, uh, uh, let's call it the noise of the DAX is higher. And therefore, DAX trading is really more difficult than S&P 500. But still, there's a good thing about trading the DAX. The DAX is one of those indices which has more or less the best spread price relation. You know, when we talk about real trading, there's always cost involved. And um, thinking about different kind of brokers, um, there are two possibilities. Uh, there's a spread and a commission, or as it is for JFD, or there's only a spread, but that spread will be higher um, if there's no commission. Let's, in, in zero approximation, it's, it's the same. Still, there are advantages uh, if you have uh, two things, spread and commission. It's better than to have a higher spread. But anyhow, Let's think about the DAX. The DAX, as we speak, is about uh, 13,000, 15, 14,000. I even don't know it exactly. And the spread is one. So the spread price relation is one to 14,000. Doing the same for S&P 500, okay? Then we have a price of about 2,600. And the spread, the typical spread here at JFD is point, uh, I think, point four. Okay, point four, that means it's um, 2.5 times uh, we have to multiply. Um, so the price is 2,600, let's say 2,500, so it would be 7,500. So it's the same then, one to 7,500. Hmm. That's close to... Um, double as expensive than compared to the DAX. So trading the S&P 500 is, let's call it more expensive um, when it comes to the relation between spread and price. And since we trade moves, we have to think in percent, yeah, then it definitely counts. So you might um, do a little bit more math on that, but you will come to the same kind of conclusion. I have to admit that the DAX has one of the best spread price relation at all, even compared to uh, most of the Forex symbols. Um, it's uh, close to the same, uh, it's nearly the same when you talk about uh, um, Euro, US dollar trading, but more or less any other symbol, you have a worse um, spread price relation. That makes DAX trading attractive. I know the, the German out there, uh, they might think I, I simply prefer the DAX because I'm a German, but that's not a good uh, argument, definitely. Um, so trading the DAX has very good spread price relation. So that's a plus for trading the DAX. Even intraday, small, even small moves, because when it comes to just small moves, and you have a small spread compared to the price. Hmm, that helps. Okay, that's a plus. And that's the reason why we introduce the DAX seasonal trading strategy for the DAX. Finally, 
you can do the same kind of investigation for answer indices and um, the, the already um, mentioned expert advisor um, can can trade any symbol um, so you can do similar analysis for other indices or other symbols as well but now let's come to the seasonals and i call that slide the mother of all seasonals and that's simply the climate um, what i have here is uh, exactly where i'm living um, so weather station means a weather station um, dresden that's the city in uh, uh, in germany and dresden klotsche that's uh, the airport of dresden and uh, yeah there i think there are other data so that's the reason why we have dresden klotsche and what we have here in red is a temperature uh, the higher uh, the, the, the highest uh, temperature of the day on average for a given month and the lowest temperature um, for a given month and by the way then we have another number here those gray bars um, meaning the number of days uh, with uh, temperatures um, below zero okay that's a season definitely and there's no question and we all know that um, yeah in, in summer we have the highest temperatures in winter we have the lowest temperatures good i know everybody would, would agree and would say hey and what does it mean for trading this, <laughs> let's ask a question or well, later we will ask questions like do we have a preferred trading direction as i mentioned already for a given day of the week we use that kind of or we want to use that kind of information as a statistical edge knowing that climate chart here um, for Dresden and maybe other cities more or less will look the same, at least in Germany, um, if they are not in the mountains, then it would be simple to give an estimate in July. Let's think we are in July. Hey, what will be the temperature, the highest temperature tomorrow? My answer would be 24. And honestly, I will be not that bad okay as as always there might be a day with uh, even 40 degrees or there might be a day of uh, just 10 degrees but we can use such a seasonal as a baseline that we have already an average so we we we, we have something to start from and that's the help of any seasonals so if we find something cyclic something which repeats and of course that kind of temperature if, we, um, if i would do a graph um, here was the next january here february uh, it would simply be some oscillation and i could repeat that uh, for the next 10 10 years okay we have a climate discussion but that's not the topic of uh, here uh, of that one but in general we know we can use cyclic events and we, we have something similar in um, trading symbols not that clear maybe like the climate in uh, or the temperature in Dresden then we can use that as a statistical edge for our trading activities and that's exactly what we want to use there's a I think that's the most well-known stock seasonal and you might heard about uh, that as well and it's called the so-called um, four-year election cycle for in this case it's uh, dow jones um the dow jones is quite interesting as for a long-term consideration uh, because we have data for more than 100 years uh, for the dow jones in this case we do not look for the average trend or the average behavior within the year that's not what I want, or what the guy here, Dimitri Speck, has plotted. Um, no, we look for the election cycle. In the United States, we have every fourth year an election. And this is the way how that plot 
is established or has been calculated. So we start within an election year and we average the Dow Jones for the last 120 years. That will give us the blue line. So if we would start at, at the uh, election year, you see, okay, the next two quarters uh, more or less stable, then at the end it goes up, and so on and so forth. So the midterm year, uh, that's this one here, um, which we will finish this year, because next year we have elections as well. So as we speak, we are here, November, December. If now everything would repeat, and by the way, um, following that kind of statistic, we see that the midterm year would be a year statistically of stagnation. Hmm. Okay, not this year. Um, that was not uh, a bad year for Dow Jones or any other index. Um, but at least that is the average over the last 120 years. But following the logic, so with the end of this year already, it would go up until summer, even much stronger than uh, this year. And then finally, the last two quarters would be uh, flat or slow, uh, slightly uh, going south. So that is seasonal. So on average, <clears throat> there's a good year, that's a pre-election year, um, and then the other one on the other hand. Okay, that's the four-year election cycle. The problem of the chart, or the problem of more or less all seasons you, you find in the internet, is that we have a, a poor or weak statistics simply because we have too less data. Um, I just got a remark here. Um, sorry for that, so I got an interruption, which is good. Maybe my my naming has been wrong. Um, I'm not sure but what is really called the election year, what is the pre-election year. Um, so when when we have January, the so next January, if that is the election year, then we would be um, in in one month from now we would be here, going flat until summer, going up the, then, and then this one here would be the pre-election year. So we would have two strong quarters, the first half of 2019, followed by those. Honestly, I'm a little bit puzzled, so I'm not 100% not sure. Anyhow, I'm, I have to admit, I don't like the chart at all. And the reason that was where I stopped, because of its pure statistics. Why do I call it pure statistics? So, of course, we have 120 years, but we are looking for something which repeats every four years. So we have about... 30 points per each month. So we have just an average of 30 points. You may have heard my last webinar about trading and statistics two weeks ago. Um, you might remember that we need huge numbers in order to, to get a real edge or a proof edge. The statistics of, of, um, of 30 Hmm. That's not that much. Or um, other statistics which look for for the, the the overall trend during a year. Okay, then we don't have a four year cycle. We have a one year cycle. But in most cases, we don't have one hundred twenty years. We might look for the last twenty years of the DAX. Okay, then we have a statistic of twelve uh, of twenty per each month. Hmm. That's not a good statistic. So we need more. We need a better statistic. And then we have another problem, especially when it comes here to charts like the one we, we have here uh, right now um, in front of us. We have an overall trend. Everybody knows that during the last 120 years, 
the Dow Jones went north. Okay, we have uh, huge drawdowns within that long-term chart, but anyhow, it went north. So that's the same we see here during those four years. Um, so we have that overall trend, especially in indices or in commodities like um, like gold, um, oil, that we have a principal trend to the north because of fundamental other reasons. And therefore, it's really hard to get good statistics here. So let's do it a little bit different. So the, the common message of any um, seasonal is that we want to have cyclic reoccurring events which really create a common pattern as my example in my previous slide, but much better as presented uh, by the temperature versus months uh, for Dresden. So that would be an ideal pattern uh, to trade, isn't it? Um, so but that's, that's what we are looking for, reoccurring events, reoccurring patterns. But I put events here in, um, How's that called? No, let's call it brackets. Um, those events might be the months itself. So then we have stories like year end rally, sell in May. That would be based on months. Or we might have stories day of the months. For example, there are stories that especially it's the first few days of the months, indices have a tendency to, to uh, go north, simply because big um, companies are um, adjusting their allocation, uh, buying new stocks, and that is a driver for going north, especially in the first couple of days of a month. So then we would have a story about the day of the month, or better to say the working day of the month. That would be the better description because the first or second might be on a weekend. Anyhow, that would in, give us not a better, better statistics than the months itself, but uh, because we have still uh, the, the base period months. But the day of the week, then we have already 52 Mondays, 52 Tuesdays. So we are getting a better statistics now at least a little bit better than uh, just going for the months itself. And we may even go further down the road um, and looking for specific hours. So maybe, and that's now um, not something I, I can prove, uh, but we would find, um, but I could prove, or we could do that kind of analysis, but I haven't done it, um, that maybe during the first two hours uh, when the market opens, um, we have a specific tendency, or during the closing, uh, maybe for the ducks between um, 6 o'clock and um, 10 o'clock p.m., maybe we might find something special there as well. So that would improve our statistics as well. But those events, I mean, when I talk about cyclic reoccurring events. And the overall assumption is quite simple. Everything repeats. So if we have a common pattern, uh, it should be valid tomorrow as well. That's always something we never know. Um, but since the fundamental things which have an impact impact on trading and prices, they are the same than 10 years or 100 years ago. Uh, think about gear and fear, uh, aspects like uh, something like that. So we, the, the assumption everything repeats is not that bad. Honestly, on the other hand, if we would not find any rules, then we simply would should not trade at all, uh, because we, if, we, if we don't find any correlation relationships, um, then everything would be just random. And so it's a little bit of basic assumption. Otherwise, it 
would be much more tricky. What we do now is we start the analysis by the day of the week. So the, the, the um, question behind is, do certain days of the week have a specific bias? So, for example, that Monday is a good day for going long. Tuesday, Wednesday is a good day for going short. And Thursday, Friday, once again, long. And honestly, my sequence was not that bad. You will see. But there's one additional aspect we have to take into account. And that's the aspect, are we in a beer market or in a bull market? So have we already a tendency going north at all? Then my sequence mentioned Monday long, Tuesday short, Wednesday short, Thursday long, Friday long was exactly right. But if we are overall already in a trend south, then it's exactly the opposite. So we would do Monday short, Tuesday, Wednesday long, and the last two days of the week once again short. But now it comes to the proof. We have to prove that. So um, otherwise, um, yeah, I would not believe uh, anybody just uh, telling me such a sequence. But let's care about the proof. And that means we use Excel. And we will focus, in this case, on uh, FDAX. So the future of the DAX. The reason behind going for the FDAX is um, that the trading hours start at 8 and close at um, 10 p.m. Uh, at least uh, German time. So we have more hours um, for anything to develop than if, you, if I would go for the uh, standard DAX starting at nine, closing at half past five. So that's one reason going for the FDAX. Um, finally, when I trade that strategy, um, I once again trade the DAX at JFD. The good thing is you can trade the DAX um, 24 hours. So I can do it from um, 8 to 10 uh, p.m. And the other good thing is exactly during those hours, I have that spread of one. Um, within the night, you have other spreads and higher spreads, but I don't care. Uh, since I mentioned the strategy should be purely intraday, opening the trade at the open of the market and closing the trade at the close of the market, let's say uh, a few uh, minutes earlier. So what we do here within the Excel sheet, let me quickly guide you through the Excel sheet. And if you have interest in that, um, just drop me a line, then you can have the, the Excel sheet as well. So what I've done is I, first I started here uh, with price data, being downloaded um, at www stock, but totally uh, uh, spelled it's, it's quite strange, uh, s t o o q um, dot com, uh, which is a Polish um, website. That's maybe the reason for the, the writing. And there you can even download the FDAX, but only on a um, daily basis. So that's what we have here. Uh, the price history uh, starting uh, uh, 1999 and going um, until yesterday. And then what I use is the following. You see, I have an EMA with, um, with my analysis. I mentioned already that we will have to distinguish between bull and beer market. Um, and now I need a definition. That's not easy because it should be mathematically. And I simply use the following. If the EMA, uh, if the close price is above the EMA, later we will see that to be absolutely exact, that the open of a new day is above the EMA based on the close price of yesterday. That's exactly what you can compare because um, Let's say we have uh, a 7.50 uh, 
uh, nine, so one minute before open of the market. We know already the EMA of yesterday, um, so the, because that is based on the close. And then we have to compare the open of the new starting day with that EMA value, and that defines whether we are in the bull or bear market. If we are above, then we have a bull below the opposite. So that's my simple definition, um, simply because I don't have a better one. Therefore, I just use an EMA to distinguish between the two situations. But I want to be, I want to distinguish between situations where we typically go north and typically go south. And now what I've done here is simply pure statistics. I started by just building the average for, for any day of the week with the absolute change from close of yesterday to close of the next day. And then looking, okay, do we have any any difference, uh, huge differences between the different days of the week? <coughs> Answer is no. Um, so it goes up a little bit from uh, 1.8 to close to 2% on Thursday and then step down once again. So there's no big difference in terms of, of uh, absolute change from close to close. But if you now do the same, but with the, with the sign of what we are doing, with, um, whether the day is finally a long day or a short day, and that is done here in the next couple of um, uh, columns. And now I jump a little bit down here and that we look for the different days of the week and the typically characteristic, the average characteristic during the last um, 20 years. Then we will find, at least for that given EMA, the following plot. Let's start with what really uh, um, strikes most here, that is Tuesday. On Tuesday, we have the longest bar north, but only in a beer market. Okay, that's interesting. And the opposite, if we are in a bull market, the Tuesday goes typically south. You remember my wording? Tuesday and Wednesday short, Monday, Thursday, Friday long. Yeah, that's exactly what statistics here is telling me. And you see that we're doing the exact opposite um, when we are uh, in a beer market. So if we are above the EMA, so we would best trade Monday long, Tuesday short, Wednesday short, Thursday long, Friday short. Okay, you might think, and that's correct, maybe we should not trade the Wednesday at all, because um, the number is quite small, and the same is uh, here for, for the Monday, um, at least for the bull situation. Okay, I haven't put that into consideration, but uh, to get it uh, quite easy, so I don't, I, I still trade the Wednesday short, being in a bull market, meaning that my open is above the EMA, um, there I go, long. But of course, it's not only the statistics I have done. Um, I have um, made complete trades out of that. Complete trades. Uh, first, I, I, I just um, uh, sum up all the, 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 the DAX points. But uh, honestly, that's not fair. Uh, let me show you the, the, uh, the graph. Uh, even if it's nice, and that is a graph of the last 20 years, so we would have earned in total more than 15,000 points. Um, why is it not um, that good? And you can see that already yeah, the, 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 the oscillation is higher at the end here and lower at the starting. What's the reason? Yeah, at 20 years ago, the DAX has been at a level of 5,000. Today it's at 14,000, so we don't have to think in in absolutely 
absolute points uh, because we want to apply a stop loss as well and that stop loss is set on a percentage base um, based on a percent of, of the price and that's exactly what I have done here within the Excel sheet that I um, did the calculation in so-called R's in, in, in units of risk and one unit of risk is always the stop loss, stop loss distance. Um, then we are here uh, in, in percentage values, stop loss is set in both, here you can even um, might change it for for stop loss of beer markets and uh, bull markets, oh that's still German here, uh, so let me correct that, so now we have it, so we have stop loss which is 1% of the open price, we have an EMA of 40 and you might even change those values and, and think, okay, what else happens if I put the stop loss um, higher, 1.5%, you see the change in the equity uh, is not that huge, but significant, uh, this one is better. So that's the way you can do your own back testing if you like, and you can change the EMA value, please do it here, I mark it. Uh, here, those are the two ones which uh, can be uh, changed and then you, you have even statistics about that kind of trading strategy and you um, can do whatever you want. And now, if for example, what does it mean if we earn 200 during the back test? What does it mean? It's quite easy. If you would invest in a single trade 100 euros and now you can calculate the number. Um, let's let's do a quick example. Uh, let's say the, the DAX is at 14,000. We want to place a stop loss 140 points away from when we open. So we, we need 140 points. If I have, um, if I want to risk 100 euros and I need a stop loss, which is 140 points away, I could buy 0.7 lots for the DAX. And that's possible, You can we can do. And that would mean I risk 100 euro. So overall, I can multiply those 200, which is one R, one unit of risk. <coughs> so that finally I would have earned 20,000 euros with a risk in every, any trade of 100 views. You can do everything here um, with that kind of Excel sheet. So we have now a trading strategy. We have a statistical edge based on the day of the week. And that's exactly what we can use. And I will show you how, for example, in a chart and how this can be run uh, with an expert advisor. Um, this expert advisor is available um, commercially uh, at uh, Peter Mull. And you see the email address, you might do a screenshot if you like, and then you can get in touch with uh, Peter for that. But so there are two possible ways to, to implement the strategy. You might do it simply by your own um, manually. You can do that. Or uh, you can use an expert advisor if you like. Um, then you don't have to do that kind of job uh, always uh, uh, at, at um, all days. So what you would do is you would compare at eight o'clock in the morning the open with the EMA value period 40 of the previous day. Now you know above or below you, we define bull or bill market. And in most cases, you know that already before the open. Um, because as I mentioned, at um, JFD, we have a 24 hour uh, tax price. So you will know it uh, maybe even days before. Uh, anyhow, and now you apply exactly those rules. If you are in a bull market, Monday, Thursday, Friday, long, otherwise short, and beer market exactly vice versa. That's all. So we would open the trade at 8 a.m. with a stop loss of 1% of the open of, um, 
open price. So you have to recalculate the number of lots for a given risk. And you simply close the trade at 10 p.m. Well, a couple of minutes earlier. So we have a stop loss, which is good and right, but we don't have take profit. So the trade just runs. And at the end of the day, there are only two situations. Either you have already reached the stop loss during the day, or you close the trade. That's all. No overnight trade, um, no um, gap risks, nothing. That's the complete strategy. And as I mentioned, you might use an expert advisor for that as well. And I uh, can demonstrate a little bit about that um, here within the chart. You learned it already that we have characteristics for a given day of the week. So, um, and I invite you already to, to use um, the same formula as the same Excel sheet for your own investigations and other symbols as well. And therefore, the expert advisor is quite flexible. Let me open a new chart is that you can see, um, oops, that's wrong. So, uh, that you can see what I mean. We have to do it individually for each day of the week for the given strategy. So finally, we would need four DAX charts, and um, which is okay, at least not four, five, sorry. And uh, no, and what we would do is we use the expert advisor. PM, ITS, Unimats, and throw that expert advisor um, on the chart. Let me, I'm not sure there was a, let me do it again. So that's all, just throwing uh, the expert advisor on the chart. And now we, we have to do uh, some adjustments. Um, Right now it's in German here. Uh, I will guide you uh, through the procedure. Um, and um, I think well, there might be an English version as well, but it's really easy uh, to, 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 to go around here. So uh, what we have to do to select this, do we have long and short orders? Maybe you have a strategy just for long or just for short. You can select that here. Then, do we have to do something just reverse? So, you know, in in my case here, above EMA, we go long, below EMA, we go short, but now it depends um, on which day of the week. Tomorrow, because that's the one I want to prepare here, tomorrow is Friday. Friday is a normal day. So there's nothing to be done reverse. So we put that on false. Friday is a standard day. If we are above the EMA, we open a long trade. If we are below, we open a short trade. So therefore, nothing reverse. It's not done daily. No, it's only Friday. And as I mentioned, we simply would open five charts, one for each day of the week. So we need opening time. So I would go for one minute after eight. A closing time, okay, that I would put five minutes before 10. And now we need a process of um, how the volume for our trade should be calculated. And we can do it um, with fixed volume, uh, fixed risk, or just as a percentage value of my account. For example, if I would risk 1% of my account um, in each trade, that would be a, a fair value. And now we have to set the distance for a stop loss, and we can do the same for trade profit, although uh, in my case, there is no take profit, therefore I put it to 100%, and my stop loss is set to one. And that's all.
Uh, almost. I come to the magic number in a second. What we need is a uh, time frame for uh, the EMA, which is day, that's correct. And we need the period, which is 40. And we do it as an exponential um, EMA. So that is already done. But now one important remark here, if we would finally do it with our with five EMAs, um, not five, five charts, one for each day of the week, we need five different magic numbers so that those trades um, cannot interfere, which in this case, since we close the trade always at the end of the day, would not happen. But anyhow, I would do it. So I go here, um, just uh, one other number. And now I'm done. And I can even save uh, that kind of configuration. So if I would restart um, or if I would maybe forgot anything, I can simply store it and um, so I can use it later as well. Okay, and that's all. And now we are prepared for Friday. So what will happen tomorrow? I can even already say today, more or less, uh, only if something, yeah, something very huge would happen overnight. Um, Okay, we never know, but let me put an EMA here as well. So it's in 40 EMA, that's fine. And then you can see, I know more or less already today that we are tomorrow still on the side of being a bull, a bull market. We will have an open, which is above um, the EMA. It would be strange if we would lose uh, that amount of points here overnight. Nothing is imp uh, impossible, but anyhow, I will assume that I open tomorrow a long trade. And yeah, that's the logic for, for tomorrow. As you can see, uh, today it was a, a long trade as well and not closed. Uh, that will come later at uh, close to 10. Um, okay, as we speak, um, I lost one euro. But so today will be more or less uh, a zero day. Let's see about Friday from tomorrow. But that's the logic of the strategy. So finally, five charts. Any chart um, with its own configuration. And that's quite flexible because then you can create other daily seasonals with other symbols and can use uh, the same kind of expert advisor and the same kind of Excel sheet in order to derive uh, those uh, strategies and execute. But still, of course, one can do that kind of strategy manually. Um, so two actions a day, one at eight, one at 10, only if the stop loss has been reached over the day, then there's no action at 10 p.m. So it's a quite easy strategy. And let me um, give you a summary of today's webinar. Seasonals are really widely spread, but in most cases, they have only a pure statistic. So the statistics are not sufficient, at least from, from uh, my thinking. But anyhow, so now we have a one was a little bit better statistic. Still, it would be nice to have 10,000 um, uh, examples in, with historical data. Unfortunately, we don't have them. So what we know is that the DAX has indeed bias for certain days of the week, but it just depends whether we are in a bull or a bear market. But the overall logic is really simple. Monday long, Tuesday, Wednesday short, Thursday, Friday long, when we are in a bull situation, and exactly the opposite in the other. It's really easy. And it's a complete DAX trading strategy intraday, so no overnight and especially no over weekend risk. And you can play around uh, with the Excel sheet, as I showed already. Just drop me a line at 
s.fridachowski at jfdbank.com. And if you have interest in the Excel sheets or the slides, and if you have interest um, in the expert advisor, um, then you have to contact Peter. And I don't know the price tag, but um, yeah, he will tell you. That's for today. And I hope you enjoyed the webinar. There will be another one in two weeks from now. And uh, Trading the Edge, I think, is the title. Uh, let's see what that means. And But overall, you know, Edge is quite important. And let's talk about statistical edges in detail, because that is what we use and what we need for any trading activity. That's for today. Enjoy the day, enjoy the evening, and um, uh, have a good weekend. This might be a little bit early, but anyhow, see you again uh, in two weeks. Have a good time. Bye-bye.